So why are there so many silver fish in your flat? Because I was kind once and I let one go. Is there a theory? What's attracting them? It's the books. I think it's the books because there's a vast concentration of them around the books by my bedside table, and they've eaten. They're eating like the covers of the books. Like, you can see they're all nibbled. Oh, yeah, it's quite bad. Like you, you, seriously, you can look at some the books that have glossy covers are okay, but the books that have like a matte finish, you can see they've eaten the ink. It's quite odd. That's exactly the intelligence that I need. Sort out my books. Well, do do you have silverfish infestation? No, I, I went through a phase that I had more than I'd like. More than how many would you like? None. <laughs> yeah. So, what's your reaction to bugs? To bugs? Yeah. Oh, usually I'm, the thing is, like, I'm usually trying to be very Buddhist about the whole thing. I don't want to kill them. I usually try and collect them and throw them out the window, and this has resulted in some hilarious situations. Like the other day, I. I have I had like an old mooncake tin and I used it to capture a silverfish and I tried to shake the silverfish out the window but I was tired and uncoordinated and it was at night and instead I just <laughs> threw the mooncake tin out the window I literally just opened the window and then like tried to flick it with my wrist and instead I just flung the mooncake tin out the window and then I was like oh shit I've just thrown a tin out of the 16th floor of a building I hope it doesn't kill someone luckily I didn't throw it very well and it wedged itself between like the air conditioner you know outside there's the air conditioning vent thing so it wedged itself between that and the wall and i was like oh thank fuck and then i went and fetched an umbrella like a long umbrella with a hooked handle and had to lean out of my window and fish out this mooncake tin and i was thinking this is going to be a darwin award i'm going to slip on the back of my toilet cistern and fall out of the 16th floor window trying to pick up a mooncake tin with an umbrella but fortunately I survived and I retrieved the mooncake tin and nobody died. Not me from falling out the window and not someone else from being brained by a mooncake tin. So it was a happy ending. And I assume that the bug survived the fall because of, you know, terminal velocity and everything. So I assume that bug survived too. I wonder if the people who live on the sixth floor, which is where like the terrace is, are just full of bugs because everyone just throws their bugs out the window. What else have we done this week? You went to see Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. So let's do a 30 second review. Um, Eddie Redmayne. No, I don't know. <laughs> what does it say about it? It was quite good. I liked it. Too many illogical. Too many, too many illogical fallacies. That's but, not how Obliviate works. I don't know. I enjoyed it. it. Like Harry Potter, all Harry Potter things are quite fun as long as you don't think about them too hard. And as soon as you start thinking about them too hard, the whole thing just falls apart. Magic is not conducive to a sensible and well-contained universe because it can just do anything i don't even know why i'm looking at you as if you're going to come up with some insightful statement you know you don't really care about this you're only going because your wife likes harry potter yeah and i don't mind ready Ed, medi red medi red at main medi blah, 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 eddie red main yeah he's a hufflepuff i mean that's loser house what house would you be in what what is ravenclaw all about then it's a smart house and gryffindor the Brave House. And the other, what's Hufflepuff all about? Hufflepuff, I was drinking Hufflepuff's Loser House. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> so, Gryffindor for the Brave, Ravenclaw for the Smart, Slytherin for the Pure of Blood, Hufflepuff is just everyone else. Slytherin Pure of Blood? Yeah, Slytherin, Slytherin's literally aristocratic jerk bags. Oh, probably Ravenclaw, I think. <laughs> you think? <laughs> I'm not brave. <laughs> I don't feel very brave. Hufflepuff's fine, really. Actually, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm just. I'm just kidding. Which one would you be in? Ravenclaw. Oh, because <laughs> <laughs> I like playing space cam. You know what's ironic? Ravenclaw's probably for people who think they're smart, and Hufflepuff's for people who are actually smart. Anyway, I'm looking at my non-existent watch. Let's start the podcast. Unsubtly, you want us to start? Well, we've only got. 45 minutes. We've got 45 minutes to actually do the actual podcast, so I think we should probably get a move on. Welcome to Lost Levels Club. Welcome to Lost Levels Club. We're a book club for games. And we are today. And we're going to talk about Earthbound for the second time. We have here today Sir Michael. Hello. (laughs) Hello. And myself. Tingathy. Tingathy, my faithful manservant. Yeah. Doing a good job of it as well. So where, where are we beginning today? We said we would start from the cave to Lilliput Steps all the way to 
just before the monkey caves. Okay, this was a massive, massive chunk of the game. This is like a huge, this is like easily twice as long as the section up to this point. Because this is, well, this is the entirety of the cave to Lilliput Steps and then back to Tucson and then from Tucson to Threed and then from Threed to Winters and then from Winters back to Threed and then from Threed to the desert and then from the desert to Foreside and from the Foreside to Moonside and then from Moonside back to the desert. How many songs do we did we get in the first part? One. I'm sorry. I I, I apologised in advance. You, you apologised in advance for something you did last week? No, no, but I apologised before. I said, I'm really not sure about these things. I'm really not sure about these checkpoints. And we said we'd blame IGN. I think the funnier thing is, is that since then, we've discovered that the original manual is online, and the original manual actually contained a strategy guide for the entire game. So all we really had to do was read the fucking manual and we'd know exactly where to put the red points. And being engineers, we should should have done that. <laughs> we should have RTFM'd. Never mind, eh? Never mind. We've made a plan, let's stick to it because that's just pure idiocy, but we're going to do it anyway. That's leadership. That's admitting le- to, to the plan. <laughs> leadership is admitting when you're wrong. Oh, no, no, wait, that's being the bigger man. Anyway, I mean, I think we should just pick and choose the bits of the game we found interesting. There's the Runaway 5. Yeah. The run- oh, jeez, the Runaway 5. Well, I mean, what happens, you get given 10 grand and you used to pay off their manager because they're incompetent at managing their business deals. And it's a separate type of money to the type of money that you hold yourself. Yeah, it's a wad of bills. It's the wad of bills. So rather than give you just 10,000, I guess if they just gave you 10,000, you could really screw yourself because you could just put it all in your wallet and then get killed and then you'd lose it all. And then you have to try and grind your way back up to 10k again. I mean, yeah, so they just give it to you as an item. The award of bills. I wanted to talk about the sale sign. The for sale sign. Did you pick this up? I did pick it up. Oh. Did you not think it was a, releva- a revelation? It's quite good. I mean, it's just what? You can sell things anywhere. Yeah, anywhere. You can sell the chicken. You can sell the chicken. Yeah, actually, it's true. You can sell the chicken. You could, it's good. It means you've got to carry the for sale sign instead. But I guess the for sale sign is quite a useful thing to carry. But you could sell chicken to the drugstore, I guess. Yeah. We should probably comment on the chicken. To be clear, the chicken is from hatching out the egg. You can earn money quite easily. You buy the egg for $12 and then it hatches into a chick. And then the chick grows up into a chicken and the chicken sells for $80. 110 in my... Po- oh, is it 110? 110. Or maybe yeah. the chick sells for ages. Whatever. It sells for... You sold the chick? I didn't sell the chick, really. The chick. I tried to sell the chick to see what it was worth. Not as much as the chicken. Because Escargo Express is a ripoff. I really like the music from Escargo Express. But you get the same music for the for sale sign. Yeah, it's great music. And I guess you get the same music for the pizza delivery guy. I wouldn't know. I've never ordered a pizza. Okay. Have you? No, I've not. Yeah, and so neither of us has ordered the pizza. Don't need to. Oh, yeah, it's just, yeah, exactly. Just don't need to. Like, eating, eating food is just such a... Okay, we're just going on a massive tangent and way off script here, but... The food, I find I'm so starved for inventory space that I don't really carry many healing or food items. I just rely on Ness for all the healing. And then I find it quite interesting because Ness's side points, I basically just have mentally allocated them all for healing. I... I never use Psy crushing, Psy rocking, Psy gaming, as I have called it. I, n- I very rarely use it, or it's, I'll only use it in like a dire situation when I really need the DPS. Cause usually I feel like it's better to spend his side points on healing. And so Paula is your main offensive magic user, effectively. Yeah. Paula is nearly always, Paula is doing Psy fire or Psy freeze. And when she's not doing those, I guess sometimes I have her attack or sometimes I have her prey just to, just as something to do and don't bother with the side defenses no not at the moment not at the moment i mean maybe that'll have to change later but for now i'm just pure pure dps smashing healing nuking anyway anyway back on topic hint shop have you used it no i've used it what what this is sir michael we're talking about here you're yeah. hardcore. Yeah, I'm hardcore. I'm like, what do I do? And I don't want to read a guide. I don't want to read a guide because that feels like cheating because I'm trying to I'm trying to embrace the what it would have been. Well, it's funny, actually. I don't want to read a guide because I'm trying to embrace what it would have been like at the time. But it turns out they give you a guide. So I probably should just read a guide. Oh, dear. But yes, I decided to use the hint shop. 
when it has been unclear what to do, I have paid for a hint. I've only done it like a couple of times. And it's very direct. It's like, you know, the, the Apple Kid and the Orange Kid, their inventors, give them money. Both of them? Well, it doesn't say which one to invest in. I just gave them both money. And I think similarly with Threed, once you get to Threed, and I used the hint shop, and the guy was like, oh, go and look at that new tent down in the south. And I was like, there's a new tent? How was, how was I supposed to know there was a new tent? But I went south, and lo and behold, there was a new tent to get the fly honey. If you remember that. Anyway, this is three. We haven't, we're still talking about two soon. Do, what did you think of the Runaway Five? I don't know what I meant to say here. Nothing. <laughs> it's like, I thought nothing about them. They're so forgettable. I think they meant to be the Blues Brothers, but then they renamed them because of copyright infringement fears. I think they, I think they're called something more like the Blues Brothers in the Japanese version. And they're a bunch of idiots. They're a bunch of morons who you have to constantly bail out. <laughs> And there's six of them. Have you noticed this? They're called the Runway Five, but if you count the people on stage, there's six of them. I, again, I was wondering, is this going to be some joke with a long payoff? But it hasn't paid off yet. It's not funny, I can tell you that. You get in the tour bus with them once you've paid off the contract. All I know is I have to suffer their performance. Oh dear, multiple times. Multiple times. And they just, they kick you out. The th- you get to three and they're like, okay, bye. And they just kick you out the tour bus. We're off to four side. And they're like, can I come to, no, I'm just going to be left in this zombie infested hellhole. Thanks. Thanks a bunch. And I realized that I had clearly not played beyond three I had clearly only played up to the point where I had made it to three with the Runway 5, because I remembered that. And then as soon as I got to three, it became very apparent that I have no memory of this place at all. I must have literally got here and stopped playing last time and just never come back to it, because I did not remember any of it. And then when you get to three, that's when you get your third character. Yes, you end up being... What happens? You get kidnapped by zombies... And then Paula psychically calls out to, I've called him Jeff, you've called him Ralph. Yeah. And the control of the game just switches to this third character and you're playing just as him. Who's in a boarding school? Yeah. I'm trying to think. There's some quite funny bits in there where, did you go into the room with all the presents? And he's like, I wrapped up all these cookies for, uh, so, you know, who's the guy? Is it Mike? Is it actually called Mike? I think so. Yeah, his for his birthday, I individually wrapped them. And you just go and unwrap all the presents and take the cookies. He's like, you're such a jerk. I, I actually only unwrapped one of them. He's like, I don't want these cookies. They're just cluttering up my inventory space. But I felt like after they told me, I had to unwrap one just to see if there really were cookies inside. And there were, yeah, fairly random. So you just play as Jeff for a bit. Yep, I don't have anything to say about that bit, no. Uh, well, I have a few things to say. I have a few things to say. I mean, I think the modest dungeon, the modest dungeon made me laugh. That was just so bizarre. There's the guy who I should look, I've looked up his name, but I've forgotten what he's called. But he said, oh, I, I, I'm an aspiring dungeon designer. And you go into his modest dungeon, which is like this really lame dungeon. But that I'm expecting to pay out as a joke, like long term. I bet you're going to come back and you're going to have his grand dungeon or something. And it's going to be completely nightmarishly complicated. But his modest dungeon is very modest, and you're attacked by ducks, I think. You also are clearly coming back this way, because there are those metal pencils that you can erase as Ness. And there's also a sanctuary location, you know, with a big sparkly star. Mm. And I tried to go in there as Jeff, but it actually said, oh, you need um, you need the chosen one or something to be here. Uh, or only Ness can, you know, enter this area or absorb this power, so... Oh uh, dear, I'm sure we're coming back. In fact, I know we're coming back because I, I think it turns out the next checkpoint is going to be back at Stonehenge where you end up walking through. Yep. And again, another complete deadbeat dad. Your Jeff's dad is such a nutcase because you're in boarding school and you go to your dad's lab and your dad is like, who are you? Oh yes, you're my son. Oh, I haven't spoken to you for like 10 years. It's like, well, that was a nice chat. Let's talk in another 10 years. All the dads in this game are Actually, Paula's dad is quite nice. Paula's dad is worried about her. And but and she's just like, oh, don't worry, dad. I'm going to go save the world with my psychic powers. I never noticed a bit about the dads. I just don't. Yeah, Jeff's dad's a complete 
deadbeat. Not, he's not a deadbeat. He's just like, he's too dedicated to his work. Ness's dad is, I can't tell if he's working too hard or probably not working too hard. Is he a bank robber or something? I mean, where's he getting the money to pay you? Exactly. Exactly. You don't know the source of the income. It's just happening. Yeah. And then we don't know about the fourth character's dad yet. Well, at least I don't. Maybe you do. Anyhow, yes, you get into a flying machine and you fly all the way back to Threed and crash in on our party. Yeah. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. Yes. And then you free them. And then you're back to Threed again. You're back to Threed again. And what do you want to say about Threed? You had a few things you actually wanted to point out. There was one quote from one of the characters, because you have to get the the zombie flypaper. And then his quote was, The zombie paper worked great. Now I wish someone would invent pretty girl paper. That wasn't a very nice thing to say, was it? Yeah, so he says this. I like. I, I thought it was quite self-aware. That's sexist. That was really inappropriate, but you've managed to distance yourself somewhat from it enough. <laughs> so these little touches that surprised me about this stupid game. Stupid in the good sense. And the next thing we mentioned, we both mentioned, was the homesickness. It must be around this time of the game that it hits, where if you haven't called your mum for a while... In the middle of battle, it will say, Ness goes to attack, but then he thought about his mother, and then it doesn't do anything, or Ness felt homesick and, and couldn't attack. But I guess that mechanic must have activated around then, because... Yeah, maybe it's not how it's played, maybe it's like a storyline point, I'm not sure. And then after that, homesickness is now present as a mechanic. Well, you have to phone your mum. If you phone your mum, it goes away. I've always phoned my mum regularly. Whenever I saw a phone, I phoned her. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Because it actually says, oh, Ness spoke to his mum and felt better. Because I was calling my dad to pick up the money. And I just called my mum because the phone was there. Oh, okay. You don't have to call your dad to pick up the money, though, you know. You only call your dad to save the game. You get the money regardless. Oh, and to... Yeah, sorry, to save the game. Not yeah. that I know what happens when I die. I just assumed I would reload from my dad's save. Yeah, well, because the other thing that happens is if you've been playing a long time, your dad calls you on the receiver phone and says, uh, you've been playing a long time, maybe you want to take a break. A long time from when? From when you turned on the console, I guess. Oh, my console's never been switched off. Because you're using filthy save states. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When that happens, I've been dutifully going, oh, okay, yeah, I'll save the game. I save the game, I reset the console, and then I carry it. I don't... (laughs) And I, was, I load the save game. I'm caring too much what computer game characters think. I don't know why I'm doing this. It's like it's like when I felt bad about calling the Escargo Express Man and without having anything to give him. I have too much empathy for non-existent things, like silverfish. Well, they they exist, but I don't know. I don't know if they have a rich internal you know, thought process. The next statement I wrote it down because I was excited that there'll be a city in the game. So after saving them from the zombie inv- invasion. Some citizens start talking about about a city, which got me excited. But you said, huh, it's, it's just foresight. foresight. It's foresight, Ting. You've been there. Mm. Have I? But up at that point, I hadn't. You hadn't been there at that point. It's yeah. True. But it's just foresight. Yeah, it is. So it's not that big. I had hope then. Yeah, it's all right. And then after that, you go through the graveyard. Is that right? Oh, yeah, yeah. You go through the graveyard to... The valley with the Mr. Saturns in. Yes. What the hell's up with them? What the hell are they anyway? They're Mr. Saturns. I don't get what they're meant to be. Are they aliens? Are they like gnomes or something? They're just heads. They they just with are. Limbs. They just are. I guess maybe they're just like Moogles in Final Fantasy. They just are. They need to do this in 3D so they can flesh out these things so we know what they are. Well, you, you, they are in 3D in Smash Brothers. Like, you can use them as, like, an assist, can't you? There's, there, yeah, they're weapon. Or they're item pickup. I just don't know what's going on. And they love to say, what, boing? Boing, boing, boing. boing. I don't know whether they'll make more sense later or if they're just never going to make sense. And that font, oh, it's like eye-melting. 
I'm pretty sure I can't read some words still. Yeah, that, that's, I'm looking at it. I'm thinking, is that a B or is that a Y? Like, I'm, I'm just not sure. But they do offer lots of freebies. They do offer lots of freebies, yeah. And I like the I like the cash machine. Like the cash machine just looks like it's like sticking its tongue out or something. There's lots of like wacky stuff in there. What else happened in, in the was it Saturn Valley? Is that what it is? Yeah, Saturn Valley. So I learned that when sleeping, Ralph repairs stuff. Yes. But I don't know what IQ is needed. I think it's all tied to IQ. Yeah, I think so too. I don't know what IQ is needed to fix certain items, so I'm just holding loads of broken stuff. Yeah, same. I'm just holding loads of broken stuff. Oh. I think I I realised that he can fix the Super Orange Machine. That was my most exciting revelation, because I, I had stashed the broken machine, Superma, with Escargo Express, and I went and called it back, and he fixed it, and he turned it into an actual useful machine. I think it's like a siphon health point machine or something. So it actually does something useful now. Oh, clever game. Yeah, yeah. So it turns out it's not complete garbage. And then, I mean, don't quote me on that. I think that's what happened. Maybe I was like delusional, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened. In fact, we never, we never mentioned that was, yeah, that's Jeff's main power, isn't it? He, re- he can use machines. He's got machines that he can use from his inventory that don't get consumed. And he's got, he does have consumable weapons as well. He's got bottle rockets. Yeah, yeah. They're really powerful. They're like mega, mega, mega nukes, like 400, 500 damage. Yeah, I was just like two-shotting bosses with them. So they're pretty good. What else? He's got Spy, which is like a uh, read enemy stats to get some sense of how powerful it is. But it doesn't make any sense to me because it's like saying attack and death ratings are this. It's like, that's great. I have no idea what they mean. Like, I don't have a good sense of what an attack of 84 means. I thought it was just compared to your defence, but who knows. But I don't know what my defence number is either. You can look that up. I guess so. I guess I'm too lazy. So, the purpose of the Saturn Valley visit is to get the password, is that right? Or is there, are there steps in between? Yes. Okay, so I actually, instead of going straight to Saturn Valley, I actually just went and wandered around some more in the area before it. And I actually found the waterfall... And got the Fuzzy Pickles photographer guy who took a picture of me in front of this waterfall. I was like, okay, this must be important. And it looks like there's a passage behind the waterfall. So I went behind the waterfall and then I was like, uh, what am I meant to do now? And then once you get to Saturn Valley, one of the Mr. Saturns will tell you, all our friends are kidnapped. They're taking them behind the waterfall. And the password is, wait for three minutes. What kind of password is that? Yeah, practically that doesn't work. But in the game, that works perfectly. Does it work? I don't think you can actually do it before you know the password. Like, I think when I actually tried to do it before, I just said dot, dot, dot. When I tried to... So you knew the password? Well, when I went behind the waterfall, it just said dot, dot, dot. And when I went behind the waterfall after I'd spoken to that guy in Mr. Saturn Village, it actually said, what's the password? Oh, so there's no prompt. There's no prompt, yeah. And then I just put down the controller and watched a YouTube video. <laughs> And then came back to it and entered Mr. Belcher's base. Do you have anything to say about Mr. Belcher's base? Oh, there's loads of red dots, which are good for XP, I remember. That was it. Yeah, I remember... The only thing I really remember was the slimy little piles that make you cry when they like they make a burping noise and they're really annoying. And they can summon help. I had the most weird and pathological battle where there was a slimy little pile and I would hit it. And then it would call for help. And I'd hit it again and it would die. And then I'd hit the second one and it would call for help. And then another one would show up and I'd hit that and it would die. And I'd hit the next one and it would call for help. And this went on eight times. I got like over 5,000 XP from this one fight because they just kept calling for help. You shouldn't be cheap. But just use your side attacks. This is what happened. Eventually I was just like, oh, for fuck's sake. When it called for help, like the eighth time, I had Nez and Paula both use Psy, whatever, and I had Jeff throw a bomb, I was just like, this is over. Boom. I shouldn't judge you. Exactly the same thing happened to me once, and I thought, I'm not doing this again. I'm just gonna not be so cheap. Yeah, that was ridiculous. I I mean, I did get a lot of XP from it, but it just never ended. It was like, this is the fight that does not end. And do you chase butterflies? Something I've not mentioned. I love chasing butterflies. Oh, the butterflies are so useful. I mean, you need, yeah, you really need the more, the the Psy points. Because I remember there's a room with a butterfly 
in that dungeon, we call it dungeon or factory, where I just kept coming in and out of the room to refill. Oh, what? That's so cheap. That's what they're for, no? You're abusing the system, Ting. Judge me, I don't care. Consider yourself judged. Can we go on after me beating Mr. Belch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a coffee break message. What is that? Did you get that? I did get that. I found that so odd. He's like, oh, come and have a cup of coffee with me. And I actually was thinking, was this coffee in the original Japanese version? Or was it like sake or something? And you're supposed to be having some like hallucination. I don't know. But no, I think it is literally a coffee break. And it's supposed to be some narrator just describing the story so far. Okay, then. In in the words of our friend Kevin, it was long. Jeez. It was long. I don't have the patience. For slow text. Yeah. I do not have the patience for slow scrolling text. I know you're supposed to, like, take stock and relax and think about your journey so far, but I'm busy. I don't have time for this. Chop, chop. You know what? You know what's actually funny? I mean, I'm playing on an emulator, too. I actually have bound speed up emulator to one of the keys on my joypad and so i just was like er, fast forward mostly because i did it twice the first time i watched it and i was like okay you know just, and i talked to him again he was like oh, let's have coffee with me it's like it's not going to do it again is it and then he did it again it's like okay fast forward and it's another case of like lily put steps they don't tell you go and get another sandstone song but there's the Milky Well behind the Belch Base, behind the hot springs where the coffee is. There's another sanctuary location, but they don't tell you to go there. Or do they? And I just missed it. I don't know. These are things I stumbled upon. Yeah, I, I think I it's don't... completely possible to skip Lily Put Steps and Milky Well. And I assume you'll just have to come back later if you did miss them. And you'll probably just stomp all over them because they're kind of XP appropriate for your, you know, this point in the game. I mentioned I got mushroom eyes for the first time. This is something you mentioned in the last episode. Oh, yeah, it's annoying, isn't it? Because it just keeps, like, randomly remapping your controls. It's really annoying. Ugh, that's all I had to say. <laughs> At least you get 50 bucks for the mushroom. Yeah. But it was a long way back to the hospital. Well, I didn't know where the nearest healer was, so I went all the way back to three, I think. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> what? that must be a... No, I had to walk down that valley, that narrow bit. Yeah, it was back to three. Yeah, that must be annoying. Anyway, foreside? Are we there yet or not yet? Yeah, we are there because after you've cleaned up the zombies in the belch base, then there's no more ghosts in the tunnel, I think. And you can just go to foreside. And the bus takes you there. That's it. Yeah, you get on the bus and then there's the traffic jam. Yes, the traffic jam. This made me laugh. I quite like that. <laughs> you like the traffic so jam? It's quite funny. So dumb. <laughs> so the, 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 the frustrating thing about the traffic jam is after you've walked all the way through the desert, and you come out on the other side. The traffic jam's gone. Oh, yeah. You can just literally walk all the way back to the street. It's like, oh, yeah, I'll just go and see the front of the traffic jam. Oh, the traffic jam's gone. So this was a big waste of everyone's time. But the bus is working then. Yeah. It's not all bad. I don't know. I walked all the way into Foreside. So it's the gold mine that's in the desert that has the the moles. I can't remember for the life of me why you need to go to the gold mine. Yeah, they, they, there's an excavation and there's a diamond. They don't explain to you why, but they, they say, oh, well, yeah, you'll need to speak to Minister Monopoly, isn't it, to proceed. And to do that, you'll need to sort of help the runaway five again or something. I mean, they, they basically tell you sort it out and go to the gold mine. So you go to the gold mine and you have to fight the mega moles and they tell you that there's five moles and they're ordered from weakest to strongest, but they all just say they're number three. Yep. I I don't know if there's some deeper joke in there that I'm not getting or if it's just supposed to be ludicrous. I think it's meant to be ludicrous. 
because I, I fought the first one. I was like, oh, I fought the third mole. And then I like nuked it because I wasn't sure. And I counted the next one and I was like, okay, is he going to be stronger or weaker? Oh no, he's the same. <laughs> Wacky. The only thing I have to bring up from this one is, did you use the exit mouse? I did use the exit mouse. So I thought my game had bugged out because I couldn't use the exit mouse. Why couldn't you use the exit mouse? Because I'm confused about this, actually. I couldn't pick it up. And it's because I had one already in my inventory, but in the Escargo Express. So you only like to have one. Is that that might be a thing? Is it because the ma- it's supposed to be like, oh, yeah, take my son with you. So there's only one exit mouse and he's just moving around. So when you've picked up the exit mouse and you haven't used him, then he's not back with his mum. But he's there, though, in the game. Well, there's two. She's got two mice with her, usually. So was there only one? There's only one. Yeah, that's because the other one's in your Escargo Express box. Because usually she's got two, and then one of them runs up and jumps like onto your character. Oh, so the exit mouse I thought I had, because she tells me to take him, but I'm I'm trying to pick him up, but clearly he's not the one I meant to take. Yeah, there's because you in like the mouse house. There's two of them when you first encounter them, and I think there were two of them as well when I met her in the cave. That makes more sense. Yeah, but it is confusing because there are two of them. I also mentioned I found that dungeon quite tough. I use all my consumables. I was just made it out. Maybe because I wasn't able to judge properly how strong the molds were. <laughs> so like you, I was maybe I was just being too aggressive with the early ones and I realized, shit, they're all the same power. I think I just used Psy Freeze beta on them. Beta, beta, okay. whatever. I used like the level two Psy Freeze on them. So I, it was, they were pretty easy to deal with. I think I used level two Psy Freeze and then just smashed them and that, and that was enough. You say, you smash them. You say well, smash them like it's an everyday thing. Yeah, I just smashed them. No, I just hit them with Nez. And yeah, sometimes maybe it took one hit or sometimes it took two, depending on whether I got a smash. Did you want to talk about the the sunstroke? Was it not a big deal? Oh yeah, sunstroke. There's all these funny mechanics. Yeah, you've got to walk through a desert. That desert itself is weird, actually, as well. Because, yeah, you, you're walking through a desert, you get sunstroke, and you have to heal it. There's the bleach skeletons, and like, one of them's like, I'm a pile of bones, I can't talk. And the other one's like, I'm a pile of bones, but I can talk. And it's like, what? What's going on? And did you find the sesame seeds? Yes. It's like, I'm a white sesame, and like, I'm a black sesame. Like, what? And did you find the contact lens? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's all this wacky stuff. And then there were the the fruit machines that were broken, so you have to use the... <laughs> Three, two- like, guys holding up, like, signs. Yeah. That was bizarre. There's, there's loads of bizarre stuff where I'm just like, is it just random? Or is there a point to it? Or is there a point? Is there, is there like, deeper humour to it, or is it just random? And is it random, like, holds up Spork? Hi, I'm the Penguin of Doom. This might be a meme you don't get. Never mind, it's probably for the best you don't get it. So, whatevs. But that is it, and then you're off to Foresight. Well, you've already been to Foresight at this point. You go to Foresight, you go back to the thing, you go back to Foresight, and the guy comes up and goes, oh, here, have this big fuck of diamond. And then the runaway five are like, oh, yeah, we might be like a million dollars in debt, and you had to give the diamond to their new manager. And she's like, oh, I'm doing you a big favour. Uh, this diamond's worth maybe like 50 bucks. And it's like, shit, I made so much money. And then the runaway five run away again. Good riddance. But that's, I felt like, you know, they put on a show and then the, the, the van comes onto the stage and they literally exit <laughs> the show on in the van. Yes. Sloppy guys. Uh, ludicrous. What else happens in Foresight? Trying to think. There were some other funny things. Pokey is the villain. I thought that was really funny. You go up the the skyscraper and Pokey is the villain. So he is coming back. He's like a, he is like a recurring lame antagonist. I mean, he's not Gygus or Gig yet. Is it Gygus or Gigius? I was I would have said Gig Gig Gygus. Yeah, I would have said Gygus too, but I can't remember how it's spelled. I can't remember if the G comes from the Y. Whatever. He's not the big bad, but he's clearly a jerkwad. He's going to keep showing up. And oh, that was the other thing that was really weird you you go into that cafe and the guy from Berglund park shows up outside and it's like he's not dead though is he he just like wanders off i'm not sure what happened there really something happens to him lay i don't remember oh, maybe the- maybe something happens later on that i don't know about because you've played beyond where i have 
Because I've played literally up to the checkpoint. And okay, so when he goes out, what happens? He just wanders off. He, you find him in the street. He's like collapsed in the street outside. Oh, yeah. that's Okay, that's what I've seen. Yeah, he's collapsed yeah. outside. Yeah, and you go and talk to him and he's just like, he tells you some stuff like check behind the counter. Yes. Yeah, and then he's just like, bye kid. And he just like sort of ambles off screen. And when you check behind the counter... This really messed with me, actually, because I kept, I kept checking behind the counter and nothing was happening. It's like, what the hell? Because I was using the L, L button. And then you actually have to bring up the menu and select check, not talk. Oh, yeah, because if you're too close to the guy, you end up talking to the guy. Yeah, so if you're pushing the context-sensitive button, it doesn't actually work. You have to actually use the menu. It's oh, like, you have to face the wall. I, I, was, facing, the I was facing the wall and I just flipped around and talked to the guy. Okay. So okay. I, I genuinely had to use the menu this time. It's so like the first time. Because I, I kept thinking, am I doing something wrong? And then you end up in Backward City Moonside. Yes. Which what? I'd... Go on, you start first. It's a... F- ball. It's a the, <laughs> the monsters... Actually, the monsters in the desert... The, there was a monster in the desert that's like a sphere with like a U on it or something. Or a big smiling sphere. That was a nightmare, fighting those. And the monsters in Moonside, again, freaking nightmare. Like, I think the... Is it the gas pump? One of them throws a bomb, and one of them uses, like, Psy Fire on you or something. One of them counts down, yeah, the 3, 2, 1, and then just throws a bomb over. Yeah, the 3, 2, 1 one is not too bad if you're facing it on its own, because you can nuke it down before it gets a chance to throw the bomb. But, oh, there's it, the Fire Hydrant. The Fire Hydrant, like, like drenches you, and that does damage to your whole party. So, actually, and Paul has been kidnapped at this point, too, which also was, like, weird and unexpected really yeah did this not happen to you or well, i thought it happened later for some reason i went into the department store and like the, the lights go out and paula gets kidnapped i can't work out where the mine happened if it's possible for mine to happen after moonside or whether it has to happen before moonside well whatevs maybe it's, I, don't, I don't know but in, in my game i didn't have paula at this point i'm not sure if i did but i remember just returning to the hotel a lot yes I re- I remember going to the hotel the first time and well actually I remember it, it being like saying it's backward city moonside yes is no and no is yes do you understand I'm like no it's like I see you know what moonside is and I'm like oh yeah I mean oh no um and then I went to the hotel and they're like oh do you want to stay the night I was like no and like okay here you go and then it goes plays the sleeping music and I was like oh yes no no yes but it turns out it was really useful to have rested the night because, yeah, I had to rest a lot. Because I kept running down out of... I was having to heal so much. Yes, it's exactly the same thing. The first time I came across the reality of yes, no, no, yes, backwards land was in the hotel. And then what else? I mean, there, I'm not sure there's much else to say about it. It's like a weird... I did quite like how they kind of made Foresight again, but like a compressed version of Foresight in like wacky backwards land and then i mean do you have anything else to say about moonside itself not really because my favorite bit was afterwards when after you beat the statue it turns out that the statue is just like projecting psychic you know hallucinations and is it there's a mouse in the basement he's just like you were just like walking around the basement with your eyes glazed over (laughs) like oh the whole thing it was all a dream but I thought that was quite funny. That was quite funny, actually. Yeah. It's like, no, you just were drooling and walking around with your eyes glazed over. I think the the last thing I wanted to say was, your mum covers for you when your teacher asks where you are. Oh, yeah. I think that's just one of the things your mum can say. I think when you call up your mum... What's wrong with my mum? What's wrong with your mum? She's an awesome mum. She's like a cool mum. <laughs> my education's at stake here. Your education to say you don't need education you got side crushing you're gonna be a hero when you come back from this one yeah you're gonna come back and play them the music that you recorded on your magic stone and, and be like guys 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 da, 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 da. i don't know check out these samples check out these samples <laughs> check out these fat beats uh and that's it and that's it because then and then it tells you to go back to the monkey cave okay and well, then, then, then a whole load of random stuff happens about yogurt i mean like what? Oh yeah, yeah. But basically, they tell you to go back to Monkey Cave, and then I, I haven't, I haven't done that. I I went back to the Monkey Cave and I've stopped because they said, "Oh, please give me a skip sandwich." It's like I'm not carrying any. I've, my inventory's full. My inventory's full of bottle rockets. I don't have room for your fucking skip sandwich. Oh, is that what it's full of? Bottle rockets. Well, whatever. You're more hardcore than me. Mine's full of 
I don't know what it's full of. Peanut butter. No, picnic lunches. That's what it's full of. Oh, yeah, they want a picnic lunch as well, don't they? Yeah, it's full of... I don't know. I, I didn't have the items they needed. I just didn't have space. I actually know that there's a picnic lunch and a skip sandwich still in the gold mines that I didn't pick up, so I should just go and grab those. But yeah, I have not played any further. I've played exactly to the point you said to stop playing at, and I stopped. Do you want a medal? Do you want a, a gold star? <laughs> for for not underachieving and not overachieving, just for perfectly achieving. Silver star, then. <laughs> the silver star. For achieving just enough? Just right, you get a bowl of lukewarm porridge. And like a bronze star is just f- for, for participating, I guess, right? For participating. So are you saying you get the gold star because you've played more? No, silver's fine. What What is the next checkpoint? What, you're asking me? You're the IGN guide reader. Okay, fine, let's have a look. So, you're supposed to complete the swamps of deep darkness, which involves the master bath battle, so I assume he's coming back, and tender village, but don't start Stonehenge base. So, those are your instructions. Yes. Complete the swamp, but don't start Stonehenge base. Yes, and I stand by them. So I've committed to these. It's not like someone can go into the, the IGN wiki and start messing me around. <laughs> now they know. Yeah, we've, we've got these pre-saved in a different document. So for better or worse, we're sticking to the plan. So there you go. Another rambly mess. I, I, I feel like we're not quite sure how to cover Earthbound. I feel like we're, we haven't quite figured out how to do these new book club episodes yet. We should probably be a bit more structured about the... We should probably not talk about this on the podcast. But I think with each book or each game, it's going to come out differently. What we want to discuss is going to be different for each one. Yeah, I think this is quite an intense one because it's so story heavy and so mechanically weird. Anyway. So we were... (laughs) Oh, (laughs) jinx. So we were Lost Lovers Club. We still are Lost Lovers Club. Please rate and subscribe to us on iTunes. You can find us on email, mike.and.ting at lostlevels.club. You can find us on Twitter, at Lost Levels Club. And you can find us on Reddit, slash r slash Lost Levels Club. And that's it. That's it. Except for... Oh no! A post-podcast feature. <laughs> what is Mike grateful for? What has Mike been grateful for since the last episode? What am I grateful for this week? What am I grateful for this week? I, the problem is... I can't, I'm not sure how seriously I'm supposed to take this. I mean, is this like the fast... Do you remember the fast show? Like, what have you been eating this week? You know, this week, I ain't been hungry. Or, I've mostly been eating Pop-Tarts. Do you, do you remember this? Yeah. I don't know. What am I grateful for this week? So, I'm grateful my work-life balance has been a bit better. I've had some things to do in the evening. I had a nice weekend of, like, playing ridiculous board games. Are you satisfied? That's like three in one. I'll take that. I feel like this was a very wet blanket. What are you grateful for? I'll take what I can get. I mean, so long as you're not complaining about something, I'll take it. You know, the problem is that, you know, being honest here, it's really quite good all the time, you know? Boom. Well, in, in three, in three <laughs> post-show features. We've really progressed here, I feel. Oh dear. It's just, it's just like pointless. It's just like, it's like me saying, it's like, I'm really grateful I have air. There are people who don't have air out in space. You know, I don't have to say it all the time. You know, there's some things you don't have to say. But you need to be reminded. I, and I feel like you need to be reminded. You're the one who wants me to remind you. Touche. Touche, Sir Michael. On that note. On that note. Bye bye. Bye bye.